Hey there, Pick 6 fans. One sec, I'm just wrapping up a text. I'm sending a message to my coworker who scratched my car in the parking lot at work, and I'm trying to get just the right emoji to capture how I feel. The message reads, Dear Tim, I know it was you, I know where you live, and you are going to pay. So should I do a devil face or a steaming mad face? Eh, I'll figure it out later. Right now, I would like to welcome you to the show. The show in question is Pick 6 Movies, and it's a podcast where me, Bo, and my best pal, Chad, make up some dumb theme and then select six movies that fit that theme, and we call that a season. This is season 24, one we are calling Pop Culture Club, and you have landed on episode 5 of that season. This time around, we are looking at movies based on things that bubbled up in pop culture, and some very smart movie executive said, We should make a movie of that thing everyone loves. Of course, by the time the movie came out, people usually had stopped loving it, but you can't fault people for trying. This movie is the Emoji Movie, and nothing says rich characters and high stakes like those dumbass smiley faces you use when you text somebody. Maybe broccoli for Tim? Nah, that doesn't seem right, and I think that's kind of sexual. Anyway, enough of my work problem. I have vengeance to wreak, and you have a show to listen to. Let's get Chad in here to give us some information on this shortcut shit heap, and I'll be back on the other side to talk with him about this movie in detail. A lot of detail. Sit back, relax, and let's hit send on this uh, emoji movie. Winky face. On November 30th, 1995, the cable network, Home Box Office, or HBO as the lazy people call it, debuted the surrealistic, hilarious sketch comedy show, Mr. Show with Bob and David. The series featured a relatively, at the time, unknown Bob Odenkirk, who would later go on to much more notable fame as Saul Goodman in the TV series Breaking Bad and starring as the titular Saul Goodman in the critically acclaimed spinoff Better Call Saul. The David in the Bob and David was David Cross, who would later go on to play never nude Tobias on the sitcom Arrested Development. Mr. Show with Bob and David is one of the greatest American sketch comedy shows ever incorporating elements of Monty Python's Flying Circus, The Kids in the Hall, elements of Saturday Night Live showed up, all with the edge of the alternative comedy scene of the 1990s. The show featured early appearances by then-unknown stars like Sarah Silverman, Jack Black, Paul F. Tompkins, Brian Bosain, and Tom Kenny, the man who would later go on to voice SpongeBob SquarePants. The initial season only created four episodes, but those four episodes had an underground following, and comedy nerds, like myself and Bo, passed around VHS copies of the show. One in particular was a high school kid who thought the show was hilarious, and he had a relative at HBO who was an executive and realized they needed to expand to a more youthful demographic and kept the show on the air. Mr. Show with Bob and David was picked up for three more seasons running through 1996, creating some of the greatest sketch comedy ever. The Titanica sketch where a death metal band, Titanica, visits a kid, played by David Cross, in the hospital after a suicide attempt where the kid was listening to one of Titanica's songs and decided to jump into a vat of acid to end his life is truly one of the funniest things ever filmed in the history of ever. The lie detector sketch where Odenkirk is progressively asked a series of escalatingly strange questions to which he always responds yes, and the audience ultimately realizes he's just applying for a job at a shoe store, fantastic. The lifeboat sketch where five survivors on a lifeboat turn out to be people from a 90s era talk show actually holds up pretty well. The sketch ends with one person sucking the ink out of a pen while another person claims they're gonna fuck a fish. The sketch where mobsters discuss what's the highest number known to man, it turns out to be 24, pure Mr. Show comedy gold. White trash icon Ronnie Dobbs inspired a musical parody of the TV show Cops, as well as a major motion picture, Run Ronnie Run, that was troubled by personal conflict, bad writing, and creative control struggles. The show would effortlessly weave one sketch into the next, and then circle back on earlier sketches with characters reappearing and bookending jokes that were set up 20 minutes earlier. It was smart, it was silly, and at times it was great cynical satire. The latter of which was on full display in the season two finale with the sketch titled Green Light Gang, where a group of movie studio executives, absent any original ideas, decide to make a movie based on the most popular coupon in America, a coupon for socks. 
movie comes out and it is a financial disaster. So the filmmakers sue all of America for misleading them into making a movie based on a coupon for socks and America loses the lawsuit. So everyone in the United States is sentenced to one viewing of Coupon the Movie. This then leads to a trailer for the film that uses every action movie cliche to sell a movie about a mom buying socks for her family. This ultimately leads to the end credits of the show where Coupon the Movie is turned into Coupon the Ride at a theme park. It is stylistic, it is silly, it is dripping with satire. Because no movie studio executive would ever greenlight a movie based on something as ridiculous as the popularity of a coupon until they made the Emoji Movie. To understand how the Emoji Movie was made, we gotta go back to understand how emojis came to be so popular. Throughout history, people have used different ways to communicate spoken language, written language, sign language, body language. Symbols as a means of communicating date back to the use of hieroglyphics, um, all the way up to modern day traffic signs. As the digital age came to be, so too emerged a new way to communicate. In the early chat rooms of the 1990s, people used emoticons as an early form of online net speak, if you will. Colon dash close parentheses was a sideways smiley face to express happiness. Swap out that close parentheses with an open parentheses, you got a frowny face. And it's a cute way to express sadness or disappointment. Bring back the close parentheses and swap out that colon with a semicolon, you got a sideways winky smiley face to show you're being sarcastic. Maybe the only use of the semicolon for most people where they felt they were using it correctly. This ultimately led Japanese artist Shikitaka Kurita at the age of 25 to develop a series of 12 by 12 pixel icons to enable people to quickly convey information for Japan's top mobile carrier, Nakomo. If you wanted to say the weather was snowing, you could just select the snow icon and not type out the word snowing. That's a six character click. You just saved yourself, pal. All in all, Kurita created 176 emojis, which are included in New York's Museum of Modern Art. If you're in the neighborhood, you want to step by and see them. You should probably search online. It'd be a lot easier, take less time. <laughs> Now, the word emoji is derived from elements of the Japanese words for picture, write, and character. Emoji. It's purely coincidental that the word emoji and emoticon bear any resemblance. The original emojis included symbols for weather, technology, traffic, the moon phases, but they also included ways for people to express emotions, you know, kind of dress up the messages that they were sending. Instead of just texting, we're having pizza for dinner, you could text, we're having pizza for dinner, heart emoji. Isn't that better? It was a dawn of a new way to communicate. The Como customers loved using the emoji so much that other platforms worldwide, specifically Apple in the US, incorporated them into their platforms as well. And Unicode support considerations were adapted, encouraging platforms and vendors to align emoji standards. As emojis grew in popularity, they grew in variety. Yellow smiley faces had ever-changing variety of emotional expressions. There were plants and animals, foods, professions, the list went on and on. And if your platform didn't have the emoji you needed to express yourself, don't worry. A bunch of third-party apps showed up to help you out. There were pushes to expand the diversity and representation of emojis by allowing users to change the skin tone and sex of the emojis to be more representative of worldwide populations. As the popularity and use of emojis became more mainstream, the digital form of communication inspired other creative endeavors. In 2016, a musical called Emoji Land premiered on the Rockwell table and stage in Los Angeles. Well, I bet that was a rousing success. <laughs> that same year, uh, the very first Emojicon was held in San Francisco. But uh, a lot of those people that saw that, uh, that Emoji Land musical went to uh, the Emojicon as well. It's my guess. Um, in 2017, there were episodes of Doctor Who and Samurai Jack that featured characters that only communicated with emojis, but the cultural impact on the arts didn't stop there, because much like the creatively bankrupt executives who greenlit Coupon the movie as satirized on Mr. Show with Bob and David, some real-life creatively bankrupt film executives gave a green light to make the Emoji Movie. You may be wondering how the Emoji Movie got made. I'm gonna tell you. 
As I mentioned, a group of creatively bankrupt studio executives said, bah, 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 bah. My kids are always stumbling around, banging on their iPhones, clickety clacking, texting these emojons. They love them! I'll bet we could make a movie about emojons. The kids could go see the movie about the things they love, and then we could get some of their sweet, sweet money. What do you say, boys? Let's get rich! And that's what they attempted to do. The movie was ultimately directed by Tony Leondis. Early in his career, Leondis worked on The Prince of Egypt and the sequel to The Lion King. I guess that was a thing. He worked on Kronk's New Groove, a sequel to Disney's The Emperor's New Groove. Also, I guess that was a thing. He worked on Lilo and Stitch 2. This guy worked on a bunch of Disney sequels. He finally got to direct an animated film that wasn't a sequel. It's a movie called Igor for the Exodus Film Group. Although I am not familiar with the film, it featured an all-star cast, including John Cusack, Molly Shannon, Steve Buscemi, Sean Hayes, Eddie Azard, Jennifer Coolidge, Jay Leno, Arsenio Hall, Christian Slater, and John Cleese. How have I never heard of this movie? 39% of Rotten Tomatoes. Cost $25 million, Made $30 million. And that explains it. Leondis was working on an original idea for DreamWorks animation titled Boo. That's B-O-O. Bureau of Otherworldly Operations, but that movie got scrapped. During this time, there was a bidding war with Sony, Warner Brothers, and Paramount Pictures all vying to see who would get to make a movie about emojis. Good God. When the dust settled, it was Sony Pictures Animation that won the rights to make a movie about emojis. Enter Leonis with his original idea, which was more or less kind of a ripoff of Toy Story. I mean, a movie inspired by Toy Story. Leondis went to Sony and pitched his idea for a movie about emojis visiting the real world. Calmer heads prevailed, and a producer said, Look, just focus on the emoji world inside the phone. Didn't you see Wreck-It Ralph? It came out just like a couple of years ago. Jesus Christ, man. Why reinvent the wheel? So Leondis patched together a story about how the emojis lived in their own world. Helping him along the way to also get some writing credit were Eric Siegel, who wrote some stuff you don't care about, and Mike White, who was the guy that pinned school. School of Rock, and he wrote a few episodes of Freaks and Geeks. And most recently, he's the creator of White Lotus over on the aforementioned home box office. Leondis, who in interviews stated that he is a gay man, felt connected to the main character Gene situation as an outcast, and that the film was very personal. Originally titled Emoji Movie, Express Yourself, was fast-tracked to get into theaters so they could start printing money as quickly as possible, or so filmmakers thought. There was immediate backlash from the public because it was a movie about emojis. But you know what? The Lego movie surprised a lot of audiences in 2015. You know what, audience? Maybe you should wait and see what the filmmakers come up with. It was announced that comedian T.J. Miller would play the lead character Gene on July 17, 2016, which is World Emoji Day. What the hell is that? Leondis wrote the part with T.J. Miller in mind. Miller had growing popularity from his role as Ehrlich Bachman on the home box office sitcom Silicon Valley. He'd also appeared in the Yogi Bear movie and did voice work in other family animated films, including Big Hero 6 and How to Train Your Dragon. Now, later in his career, Miller got in trouble for a whole bunch of stuff, including sexual assault allegations and making a bomb threat on an Amtrak train. That's another story. But don't go looking for him in Deadpool 3. Anna Ferris came in to voice the female lead. James Corden from Carpool Karaoke fame came in to lend his voice talents to the cast. Then came the most important casting call of all. Who was going to voice the shit emoji? I mean, the poop emoji. Reportedly, filmmakers went to Jordan Peele, a black man, to see if he would like to voice the character of shit. Peele's response to his manager was, that's fucked up. Ultimately, filmmakers gave the role to Sir Patrick Stewart. Other cast members include Maya Rudolph, comedians Stephen Wright and Jeff Ross, actresses Sofia Fergara and Jennifer Coolidge are in there, singer Christina Aguilera, and celebrity chef Rachel Ray. What are we doing here, people? So, so they make this thing. And the marketing for the movie kicks in. The teaser trailer comes out. It gets 4,000 likes and like 22,000 dislikes in, I don't know, like a week or a month because it looks terrible. There was all kinds of noise about the movie coming out, including the filmmakers ringing that bell at the stock exchange. And they turned the Empire State Building yellow for Emoji Day. Nobody cares about any of this stuff when a movie comes out. Sony invited YouTuber Jax Films 
who was the film's number one supporter before the film's release. Well, they invited him to the film's premiere, but it turns out Jack's film's praise for the movie was all sarcastic. Take that, boomers! Leading up to the film's release, there were review embargoes. Ooh, that's not good. And the movie comes out on July 28th, 2017. Prime time summer family film going fun. Pre-pandemic. Movie comes out and it lands in second at the box office behind Dunkirk. <laughs> and just ahead of Girls Trip and Atomic Blonde. Spider-Man Homecoming was in fifth place having been in theaters for a month. The best review for this movie I found came from David Ehrlich of IndieWire, who gave the movie a D on a scale of A to F. That's being generous. <laughs> Saying of the film, make no mistake, the Emoji movie is very, very, very bad. We're talking about a hyperactive piece of corporate propaganda in which Spotify saves the world and Sir Patrick Stewart voices a living turd. But what do critics know? All right, here's a review from a normal person, like you or me. Well, like me anyway. A normal person named uh, Colton Baxter, who wrote a Google review that reads this. Quote, this is easily the greatest film I've ever seen in my life. Nothing even comes close to this masterpiece. After I saw this movie, I literally had to stop watching other movies because I knew nothing could compete with it. The plot is engaging. The animation is gorgeous. This is quite easily the greatest piece of media ever produced without a doubt. I was on the edge of my seat for the entire hour and a half, hoping that Gene would make the right face. 16 people found this review helpful. You know what, Mr. Baxter? Ding! Make that 17. <laughs> The Emoji Movie was nominated for and took home Golden Raspberry Awards for Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst Screen Combo, and Worst Screenplay. But filmmakers didn't have to sue America for tricking them into making this movie the way the makers of Coupon the Movie did. The movie cost 50 million bucks and it pulled in about 220 million worldwide. Is that a lot? I have no idea. All I know is it wasn't enough to make a sequel. And since that's all we need to know, let's say we get Mr. Bo Ransdell in here to break this movie down in way too much detail just to see how bad it is. Ladies and gentlemen, eggplants and peaches, it's 2017's The Emoji Movie? And welcome to Pick 6 Movies. I am Chad Cooper, and I am joined by a man who has ambitiously created his own digital icons for communicating called Ebojis. Mr. Bo Ransdell. Bo, how are you doing today? Winky face, Chad. <laughs> Winky face, middle finger, shoe. <laughs> um, this movie is, uh -huh. the Emoji movie, is bad. But if you really take a few steps back from it, it appears to have all the ingredients needed to make a slightly competent, mostly inoffensive movie that nobody asked for. In the same way that if you stitch together a bunch of parts of different corpses, yeah. you have the body of a man, but no spark of life. I would agree with that. This movie has a lot of color. There are pop music songs, famous voice actors. There's a paper thin plot. There are cliched character arcs. You know, there's, there's like the overused themes of being yourself or true to yourself or something. But yeah, it's just all shallow and disjointed. Yeah, it's a, a shocking example of how to make a movie that doesn't appeal to anyone or anything. That no one wanted or asked for. I am not above the no one asked for this kind of movie. You know, I saw that new Evil Dead movie. I was like, nobody was really asking for a new Evil Dead movie. And then it came out and I was like, this is pretty good. I'm not saying you shouldn't make something that no one asked for. No one ever asked for the iPhone. And then it shows up and everybody suddenly wants smartphones. I'm not saying that that's a reason not to do something. I'm saying that sometimes people ask for something and that's the reason it got made. Sure. Like if people were clamoring to make the insert movie title here that shouldn't be made, but people wanted it, like the Spice Girls movie. That's something yeah. they're like, oh, I would see that. It's like a hard day's night, but with the Spice Girls and they're popular. Like, yeah, that's something people would go see. But no one was saying, I love emojis so much. I want to see a movie about emojis. Yeah, I 
hate emojis. I don't like using them. In fact, I rarely, if ever, do. I think I have a handful of times. In fact, I hate them so much. Famously, Alan, a, a mutual friend of ours, um, she would send me texts and include emojis. And I would just, let's be honest, berate her for using emojis. Because as someone who believes deeply in the utility of the English language, I'm like, there's a way to express yourself without the use of these stupid little symbols. That became a joke where we would type out emojis. So that I would send her a message and then say, pizza slice, happy face pineapple. Right. And type that out as opposed to making it an emoji. And it became a running gag. And it took literally a decade, probably, before I ever actually used an emoji. <laughs> it's a bastardization of communication that I know I'm the losing I'm on the losing side of this and all. I just hate it. I think I only use it with one or two people that I know, and it's sarcastic. I understand. Look, I'm an old man. There is a generation that have grown up in the digital age that the use of emojis is no different than you or I using spray paint on a bridge or just references to the movie Midnight Run. It is just eponymous, <laughs> right? It's just something that is going to come out of them no matter what you want. Right. And I get it. I understand it. But I just despise it because because you're an old man. It's not it's not for you. Right. And it's not how I communicate. It's not how I even when I text people. I've had relatives and, and loved ones that will say, like, you don't have to use commas in text messages. You don't even have to use capitalization, really. And I'm like, what kind of monster writes a sentence without proper punctuation? You know, it's just yeah. the way I am, the way I grew up, the, there's a focus I have on the importance of the written word, and even in text messages, I cannot let that go. I agree with you. I've had people call me out for using correct punctuation and grammar and i'm like well that's because you're ignorant <laughs> right that's because i know how to communicate and how to express myself and they're not calling me out because i'm using it incorrectly they're calling me out because i'm using it and it's like ha, look at this guy yeah mr book smarts with his periods and his cameras yeah yeah the number of times i read an essay from my students and it's like they're texting it to me with all the bad grammar and you are instead of your and that kind of thing <laughs> like i just want to stick and the ability to just crack them across the skull every time somebody writes a formal bit of writing as if it is a text message but it's the way that they've <laughs> learned to communicate and also i don't want to be arrested you're telling me there's wait there's three different ways to use the word two that's fucking crazy there's just a number right but what no it, it's stunning and i wonder five ten years from now and maybe it won't matter because five ten years from now a boss will expect the same kind of communication as they are giving to them but writing an email like you're writing a text to like somebody higher up in a company you're going to be fired on the spot and then they're going to come for me here's my biggest problem with this movie. <laughs> go on and i got a lot of them the biggest problem I have is that it never fully explains the rules of the world that it creates. And I'm going to do my best and I get hung up on all of these tiny details. Because when you start pulling on these threads of the plot, the entire film just falls apart. And I get mm -hmm. this is a movie for children or stupid people. I understand that. But still, movies like this, and by like this, I mean movies that are ripping off everything that Disney and Pixar ever made. Just put up some guardrails as to what this world is like. What is the reality in which these characters exist so that you can establish conflict and drama, suspense, just and purpose? It doesn't do that at all. I think I could probably, without trying, list 20 questions that are not answered in this movie that should have been. I don't know that I could come up with the same just because at a certain point I stopped caring. Not about doing the show, obviously, <laughs> but I just didn't care about the world that the movie is creating enough. That I was like, I just need to get through this. This movie is 86 minutes long. Dude, that's with credits. Yeah, it's a tight 77 if you chop those off. That was my goal. I've just got to get through this. Because I had seen this movie before, and I remembered enough about it to know that it was terrible. Pushing back through it, it was like, I just got to put my head down. 
like you said, all the ingredients are there. It's funny because watching this again, I was struck by how blatantly the ingredients are there. Like it, This feels like a dry erase board full of popular ideas and tropes that all get shoved into a movie and somebody forgot that it also has to be intellectually and or emotionally engaging. We have to care about the characters in the movie. You can't just throw all the ingredients in the pot, Bo. You got to cook with love. And it's also hard, you know, at its outset to find myself interested in an emoji that is just by its very nature, such a one note kind of thing. And even if an emoji like the one in our movie can make different faces, it's still just a thing you throw in a text or an email, as happens in this movie. And that's it. That's all it's ever going to be. Like, I don't need every movie to have stakes that include the end of the world or anything like that. But the stakes in this movie are so low. Well, if everything goes wrong, Chad, somebody resets their phone. That's if everything goes wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Let, here, let's let's get through this. This well, this won't take too long. So this movie kicks off, and we get the Columbia Pictures logo with the woman holding the torch, and an animated set of hands holding a phone comes into frame, snaps a picture, then places a smiley emoji face wearing black sunglasses on top of the woman holding the torch's face, and then our cartoon person texts it to someone else. I'm assuming that in theaters, moments just before this happened, there was a short informal clip asking people people mostly the assholes to keep their phones in their pockets and not be the assholes that they are during the movie but then this movie starts and you get this real mixed message of Psst, come on you can take out your phone come on take it out of your pocket that guy's gone make a bootleg copy of this movie if you want live stream it we don't give a shit <laughs> Come on. Right. In fairness, I hate it when people use their phones in movies. It, it really does distract me to no end. But if I had seen this movie in a theater, I would have begged someone to pull out their phone just to give me something to look at that wasn't going to make me angry. Peep it over <laughs> someone's shoulder to see what text they're sending. Like, you tapping them on the shoulder? Hey, psst. It's Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. By the way, if you're going to begin a sentence with a dependent clause like that, you got to put a comma after the dependent clause to introduce the independent clause. But you don't have to do that the other way. You can do independent clause, then dependent clause with no comma. Is this too much? Yeah, just just put the comma. <laughs> okay, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fucking idiot. <laughs> so... You need a semicolon because it's two <laughs> independent clauses you've got there. They're related ideas. Or you can just comma and use a conjunction either way. But you're going to need one of those. Uh, if you try to tap my shoulder one more time, I'm going to punch you in the face, old man. No, no, not a colon. A colon you can't Security! use. Security! Uh, <laughs> we start this movie after the god-awful thing that they do to the columbia logo with tj miller as you pointed out the problematic tj miller and who could have seen that coming everybody right based on how he's an asshole and everything he's in surprise surprise turns out he's an asshole right but he's doing voiceover here we are in the greatest place in the world the smartphone yeah. you're like oh God, already I hate this because I think the smartphone is one of the things that is going to lead to the downfall of whatever civilization we got left. But what do I know? I want to get your thoughts on the voice acting in this movie because the performances that are given, except for Maya Rudolph, they all just feel like it's the actors reading their lines. And I'm assuming that's because the characters themselves have no depth and they don't really do anything and they don't have purpose. I mean, I don't know what you're going to fill that empty vessel with, but TJ Miller <laughs> just really feels like he's reading the script for the first time. We'll get to Maya Rudolph later as Smiley, but she's doing the overly happy flight attendant or guest services representative. But everyone else is, it just sounds like them just being who they are in real life. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that everyone is sort of sleepwalking through this except for Maya Rudolph you could kind of argue Patrick Stewart but that's just so humiliating luckily he's not in this very much I thought about TJ Miller you know if you had to play this role of Gene what do you do because the character like the entire character is summed up with the like why am I such a misfit I am not just a net wet 
You can't <laughs> fire me. I quit. Why can't I fit in? <laughs> Which, to that point, the real plot of this movie was covered in Rankin and Bass's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. That guy's weird. Get him the fuck out of here. And then they go on a little venture, and at the end they come back and they're like, Hey, could you use your weird misfitness to save the day? Sure, I can do that. And then they have a little dance party and sing a song that you know. I would love it if it, at the end of this, though, he was just like, fuck you. You guys kick me out of your uh-huh. fancy cube. Yeah. I'm just going to watch the world burn. That's it. We're all going to go to hell together tonight, <laughs> you know? See, I think this movie would have been... I got a few ways they could have made this movie better. One, not make it. Two, it could have been directed by Spike Jones and have him do to this what he did with Where the Wild Things Are, which is a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen that come in and make this movie this surrealistic commentary on the the destructive nature of mobile phones and how they connect us but also isolate us be down for that this movie kind of dances around the idea of the negative effects of phones but then it's so busy celebrating apps and text messages and emojis that it forgets to be about anything right and so the only thing you can come away from is really the story of Gene, which just isn't all that interesting. So after TJ Miller says, we're here in the most amazing world of the smartphone. Each little app is its own planet of perfect technology, providing services so necessary and essential. And then the movie pans out of the phone and we see a bunch of high school kids just wander around with their heads buried in their phones. And we meet Alex, who owns the phone that contains all of the emojis we are going to meet in this movie. So in your phone, you have a set of emojis. So every phone has its own set of emojis that are living, thinking beings. That's what we are to conclude. That's right. Every phone is its own universe connected apparently by Dropbox and nothing else. But if you get a new phone, you basically, you are the Lord and you are causing a flood to destroy all of humanity. Yeah, some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. Or you can just reset a phone. It's just going to let the battery run out. Right. Right. But yeah, that's the other thing is like when it overheats because you left your phone in the car seat and the sun baked it until it just stopped working for a little bit or you let the battery go down. Does everything stop? Do all these people go into some weird like comatose state? You know what would have made this movie better is if they (laughs) did what the Lego movie did and make the people real people and make the emojis animated. I think that would have been better. Yeah, there's this paper thin story of Alex who gets this text from a cute girl named Addie that he likes. <laughs> And T.J. Miller tells us, this is Alex. He, just like every high schooler, his world revolves around his phone. He walks around awkward and embarrassed and horny all the time. He's constantly putting his biology book over his lap, thinks his unexpected and untimely boners. And as attention spans decrease and life moves faster, that's where I come in. Who's got time to type out words? Just use emojis. And so we swoop into the phone to go to Textopolis. Yeah. The home of emojis. And it looks like something out of Zootopia. It looks like the world of Wreck-It Ralph, but for emojis. Everything in this feels like something you've already seen before. Oh, yes. The derivative nature of this movie cannot be undersold. No. T.J. Miller tells us, each emoji does one thing and we have to nail it every time. And so we see this Christmas tree and some princesses. Let's pause on the princesses because this comes in later. These four princesses come out two by two with varying skin tones and, and hair hues. And they all just look so pretty. And they're trot, trot, trotting off. And having watched this movie twice, twice, Bo, in preparation Mm -hmm. for this, I was like, why wouldn't, because spoilers, Jailbreak, our female hacker we're going to meet in a few minutes, she -hmm. turns out to be a princess. But she's not one of these four princesses. Why wouldn't you make her one of the four princesses here and sort of have her show her disdain for being a princess? 
Instead, they all walk out of this beauty salon and they're teeing and giggling. I guess because it would ruin the surprise later uh, for a reveal that I don't know that anybody cared about. No one cared about it. But at the end when they're like, oh, she's the princess. I'm like, yeah, but there were four princesses earlier. I'm, again, I, I, I'm really going to try hard to not pull at these threads. But it, all of this is just sloppy, lazy writing and filmmaking. You are 100% correct because the movie doesn't think past the thing it's doing to think about how that affects other things in the movie because one of the things that we could see here is one of the princesses like doing the whistle and calling birds thing you could have done that reveal at later in the movie with jailbreak and her doing that would let you know who she is right and that would be a more clever way to handle that reveal than just like whoopsie daisy her hat fell off right and make it part of the actual plot and not just a beat where you reveal more about this character. You could actually use it. And when she does use it, it's kind of played as part of an extended gag. But it would it would play so much better if you had that be the defining moment for that character where she uses her weakness as her strength. Gene goes on to say, the devil, the poop emoji, the thumbs up, they're all good to go. They just have to show up. By the way, Bo, devil poop emoji, thumbs up. That's what I send my wife every time I leave the bathroom after taking a <laughs> shit. Let her, let her know to stay away for an hour. So Jean says, well, the expressions, though, we have it rough because we have to be on all the time. Like if the crier wins the lottery, they still have to cry. Or if happy face breaks his arm. Then you see this nightmare of this happy face emoji saying like, oh, my right arm's broken. I can see the bone. Isn't this great? And you're like, oh my God, this is hell for some of these characters. And, and the cry emoji comes out of a bodega and is like, I just won the lottery. I'm rich. So their society has currency and millionaires and healthcare because the one with the compound fracture is headed to the hospital. So do they have like a single payer healthcare system like Canada? There's no way their health care is part of their employment benefits. I think everybody works for the same place in town, or at least they're dependent on the Monsters, Inc. scare factory knockoff. How long has this world been going that it has evolved to a point? Like, as soon as you turn your phone on, are all these emojis just immediately in this culture? I think another way you could have made this movie better. I don't have a single recommendation, but another approach to have made this movie better would to have made the emojis unaware of Alex and the outside world set it in this environment and let that be it just lean more into the Zootopia side of things that it's emojis and here's what emojis are doing it doesn't really have it's not trying to do the satire on apps and the impact of smartphones on human culture just do a movie about emojis then you don't have these questions like what happens if the phone dies what happens if you get a new phone they, like well, uh -huh. emojis live in emoji and that's it and the movie it never it never goes beyond the surface of presenting this story of gene and so forth like it, it as you said it raises all these questions about this world and how it operates but it doesn't care about any of that stuff because it's too busy huh cactus emoji right and yeah. look at this guy over here. It's poop, right? And it doesn't do anything with it. No. We finally get to meet Gene, because if you didn't know who T.J. Miller was or recognize his voice, you have no idea who the narrator is. Turns out it's Gene, our meh emoji. He comes walking out of this brownstone, and he says, I'm Gene. I'm a meh. So I got to be meh all the time. And when he goes outside, he runs into this pink sprinkled donut emoji that is pushing a baby carriage filled with an assortment of donut holes, implying that they're babies. And also, Gene has parents. So do they have sex? Do they reproduce? <laughs> right. Is it asexual reproduction or emojis fucking? And then why would two mez have sex to make Gene? Here, all right, look, here's another idea. You make Textopolis all these emojis, and some are real emojis, but then there are other emerging emojis that haven't been introduced yet, and you have the Gene character, and he doesn't know what his emoji is because he's got all these different expressions. And you sort of make the movie a self-discovery where at the end he's like, hey, I'm not just one thing. I'm many emotions all at once. Like, you could yes. do that. Yes, 
that which is it's slightly what they do but not really yes again because they're it's not actually saying anything you know there's nothing below the surface of gene can't be just one emotion he can't maintain that meh emotion you know when he sees all these baby donuts and his expression breaks the donut freaks out like he just exposed himself or something <laughs> then he rolls up on some monkey emojis who are in little suits there's a joke about them being up to monkey business and then he laughs and goes past them to a crosswalk where a shrimp is there standing beside him waiting to cross the emoji street and he's like this is gonna be my first day on the phone and he ends up knocking over some emoticons as he's walking, which, as you said in your introduction, were sort of the precursor to emojis. And he says, oh, I hate knocking over the elderly like this. Yeah. And then he just grabs a balloon mm -hmm. out of nowhere to mm -hmm. float away to work. Yeah. Why wouldn't you make this just do the Wizard of Oz? You take Gene. You have him meet a few people and like he has to go to the cloud to get the source code or else by a certain day, everything's going to be deleted, which is sort of what they do. But that deletion doesn't come until later in the movie. And it's real random where Alex is like, hey, my phone's kind of fucking up. I'm going to take it down to Verizon or the Apple Genius Bar and have them fix my phone. Also, for what it's worth, having a job title of Apple Genius is about as inflated as the subway sandwich artist <laughs> neither genius nor artist C correct we get to meet gene's mom and dad who as i mentioned are both meh emojis gene's dad is voiced by deadpan and ultra dry and brilliantly witty comedian stephen wright which is perfect casting to play the dad meh but the mom is voiced by jennifer coolidge who some of you know as stifler's mom and she's on those white lotus series yeah yeah yeah. and when i think about her i just think about this over the top sometimes sexy persona and that did not feel like very good casting i was like look I, I, rachel dretch probably had a pretty open calendar yeah rachel dretch is a good call gene's mom and dad they escort him into the men's room which again i'm like so these things piss and shit do they eat food would they eat those donuts dude and also it's poop coming out of the bathroom do they live in the toilets and they're just on their way to work now? I don't know. The mom and dad say to Gene, Gene, you can't go to work at the factory or whatever the hell this place is. You show other emotions than meh. Gene says, that's not fair. All my friends work at the cube. And then, as you said, a little tiny shit emoji comes out and he's like, I'm working at the phone today and I'm only 10. I'm like, where are their child labor laws in place? 10 what kind of society is this and then the dad shit emoji comes out and he's voiced by sir patrick stewart and he's like that's because i believe in you son and then there's a crack about them not washing their shit hands are they actual shit also if this baby poop emoji is 10 years old has alex had a phone for 10 years that's been turned on this See, entire time I, I know. and never been reset i don't does I don't know. time move faster so that you know one year in textopolis is a month in human terms like you said there are no rules to this so who knows and nothing matters the whole movie it feels like it's seeking for any sight gag or hacky pun that they can throw in i will give credit where credit is due one little joke i thought was funny was that when the kid shit emoji walks out of the bathroom he has a tiny piece of toilet paper stuck to his heel which i was like that was kind of clever and as he and his dad walk out they are chanting we're number two well, number two. And, and that made me giggle a little bit. The number of times that Sir Patrick Stewart has to degrade and humiliate himself in this movie. Like, every line he has is a line that you're like, oh, please don't say that. You're such a better actor than any of this. It's all wordplay involving shit or assholes or farts. There's one Star Trek reference later on. But yes, most of it is just like, look, son, we're poop. We're living poop. Can you believe it? Look at all the flies hanging around us. Gene says, Mom, Dad, if I'm a working emoji, then I'll finally fit in. Just give me a chance. 
I'll make the right face. I promise, Dad. His parents are like, all right, son, you can go to work at the cube. So Gene goes to work, and the cube isn't really a cube. It's a series of cubes. And we meet Smiler, who is a woman emoji with this grotesque, over-the-top, happy persona and big chomper teeth to match. As I mentioned earlier, this character is voiced by Maya Rudolph. She does not know how not to try. She gives 100% all the time. And she's trying in this. It's just nothing she has to say is very funny. So she's delivering these lines with incredible energy. But there's just nothing more than that behind it. No. And I feel bad for her because Maya Rudolph is wonderful. And I love Maya Rudolph to death. Yeah, so she's like, look, everyone. Everyone gets their own cube. And then when Alex selects you, you're scanned. And the scan is sent to Alex's text box. And there's nothing like getting scanned for the first time. And at that point, I'm like, did she... Is that a fuck joke? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, good. It seems like a real inefficient way to make emojis appear on a phone. Because it's like this stacked row of cubes that are about, I don't know what, like 100 long, 10 high. And then there's a big metallic finger that goes to the appropriate cube and then scans the face of a living emoji in that cube chad i just had an idea for how to make this movie less worse all right so what if instead of this scan and they pop up in the text box it's like those old bank pneumatic tubes that sucks yeah the emojis up to the text box okay every time the text is used they're kind of called up that way right they kind of shoot up onto this digital stream or whatever into the text window okay and our hero somehow escapes the phone and is walking around in the real world There, he realizes, oh, life isn't just one emotion. Life is complicated and messy, and everybody experiences all these emotions. Kind of like what the movie does, only instead of somebody with all these multiple expressions realizing that that's okay to have, somebody with one emotion understanding that life is more emotionally complicated than a single emotion. All right. And so that is the lesson that he learns. And then when he goes back, and you could still have kind of the same ending where the emoji expresses something that's more complicated than a simple smiley face or angry face at the end of the movie, which helps this teenager understand likewise that life and complicated emotions are just part of the growing process. Okay. Yeah, I agree with this. But you have Spike Jones direct it. And mm-hmm. when you say he comes into the real world, he just comes into the bedroom of the kid who owns the phone. And it's essentially 90 minutes of this kid talking to this emoji. And they're having like really deep philosophical conversations about what it's like to grow from a child to a youthful teen into a young man and the complexity around that. And there's lots of tears and laughter. And then at the end of it, you realize that that none of this took place. It's just this kid talking to him himself working through some shit oh i like this a lot it's yes uh, yeah i'm totally on board the final shot is the the kid walking into his parents bedroom and they're asleep and he he opens up the nightstand and it's empty and then you see the kid's hand put a gun in the drawer and then he closes it and goes back to his bedroom and you're like that kid was gonna kill himself but he didn't (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i mean it's dark but i like it's it better than this i i also like the idea i i like the idea also of the movie being <laughs> our better version of this is him going to talk to his parents about whatever complicated thing he was talking like maybe they were getting divorced or uh, something right sure absolutely and then dad's got a highball <laughs> sure mom's <laughs> on the phone with her personal trainer in quotes <laughs> and but the end of the movie is him putting down his phone and understanding that this connection that he has with his parents is something that goes beyond the digital to express these complicated emotions. He doesn't need text messages and emojis. He needs to sit down and talk with them. Yes. That is a way to make this movie say something. But I, I also like that we're, you know, we need to talk about Kevin situation was barely averted. Thanks to this, you know, schizophrenia induced conversation he has with an emoji. I like that too. All of this would be better. All of it would be much more interesting than what it is that we're dealing with. Smiler leads them to the favorites area, which is this like roped off exclusive club. Yeah. It's like the VIP lounge for emojis. There we first meet high five 
Five is played by Bane to the National Conversation, James Corden, mm-hmm. uh, who's just like, please let me in, please let me in. Mm-hmm. And Gene slips by to go into his cube where he's going to work as meh. We do find out that High Five has been replaced as a most used emoji because that's who gets to go into the VIP lounge. Favorited emojis, the ones they use all the time. And he used to be a favorite emoji, but he got replaced by the fist bump. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of thing that you see over on 8chan or so I've heard that kind of supports Mm -hmm. those Charlottesville protests on January 6th. Where it's like, do you see that cartoon documentary about the emojis? Government's replacing high fives with fist bumps. Fist will not replace us. Fist will not replace us. Come on, boy. Say it after me. I didn't understand that's what replacement theory was. (laughs) That's replacing high fives with fist bumps. That is insidious. It goes a lot deeper. It goes all the way to the top. Pearl Milling Company syrup. I didn't buy Aunt Jemima for different reasons, but I sure as hell ain't buying Pearl Milling Company syrup replacing woke. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Anheuser-Busch sending cans of beer to some transsexual, making it impossible for me to enjoy a Bud Light because every time I do, I'll have to question my sexuality. And am I attracted (laughs) to this transsexual? It's hard to parse. I'm going to blow up Bud Light with dynamite and high-powered weapons in protest. To a person whom I have never met. Or heard of since yesterday. Right, and whose circle of influence does not come anywhere near mine. But I am so knee-jerk terrified by the idea that sexuality is more than me drunkenly throwing my dick into my wife. (laughs) That even entertaining the notion that it is a larger sphere of emotions and physical relationships and, and identification that I have to threaten to shoot cases of Bud Light by a lake or whatever the fuck Kid Rock was doing. It's just the most <laughs> small-minded and pointless <laughs> sort. Because, again, you've already bought yes. the Bud Light. Bud Light won. They don't give a shit if you drink it or not. <sighs> it's a shock. Anyway. I want to talk a little bit about the fact that High Five looks like a naked version of the Hamburger Helper mascot. Kind of. With a Band-Aid on for some reason. That's what I want to talk about. He's wearing a Band-Aid on his index finger, which I thought maybe that's supposed to be like a bandana. And it really feels like something that should be addressed in this movie, but it is not. It's really unsettling because i immediately go to well is that a masturbation accident because i'm a dirt bag and so, <laughs> so but you're right we we go back to the in quotes real world in this movie where alex is in class debating about what to text this girl addy so everybody in the cube goes on high alert because uh-oh an emoji is about to be called up into action and gene's parents are there watching him on his first day of work and this is a real moment of identification i had in the movie where this teacher is trying to teach a bunch of kids who are just staring down at their phones and not giving a shit about nothing else yeah sure enough alex is i guess texting about the class or whatever and it's pulling up the meh emojis the whole place goes batshit because you know meh is being called up for the first time but he panics and can't maintain the meh expression and so this messy confused looking uh emoji is sent up the girl ends up putting her phone down and is like what the fuck is this the emoji all about her response is like ah, all right right and just puts it down because she doesn't understand what that message is supposed to be and then gene is now asked to leave the cube because he is fucked up and upset the order of things because a met emoji is what was called for. That is not what he delivered. And therefore the phone is now in a race for survival. We'll find out because what he selected and what appeared are two different things. Yeah. He leaves the cube or the wall of cubes and sirens are going off and he gr- jumps out and grabs this metallic picking finger that goes cube by cube. It tumbles over due to poor craftsmanship and just smashes mm-hmm. through multiple rows of these emoji cubes. Does this just shut down the whole operation? What happens if this kid Alex in the real world texts another emoji? They don't have the infrastructure or a backup wall of cubes to make that happen. They don't have a site B. Absolutely. There's no like Ela Sorna right. for emojis or whatever. Smiler, meanwhile, like as everything is falling apart, she's like, you're a malfunction. You're going to be destroyed. Hey, that's what happened in Wreck-It Ralph. 
Remember she had a glitch and she was an outcast. I liked that movie. Not like this one. That is a far super. Even the sequel, which is not nearly as good, is superior to this in almost every way. Yeah. With with some of the same themes. Yes. But yeah, it, this is awful. So yes. Smiler, she's our villain in the movie. Or the closest thing we have to a villain or an antagonist. Right. She is the antagonist for sure. Gene goes up to the top of whatever building they're all working in. And his parents come up to comfort him. And Gene's like, I'm a malfunction. But his dad is like, how about we go hide you away in our apartment? <laughs> like, what? He's like, I can't do that. I've got to serve some kind of purpose around here. I'll show you. Yeah. And then he just runs off. He goes to the boardroom where they're having this emergency meeting to decide whether or not he should be slaughtered in the town square. Inside the emoji elders, they decide that Gene is a malfunction. And the board comes out and it's some emojis we've seen before. One of them's the shit emoji. And Gene says to the shit emoji, tell me true turd, what happened in there? <laughs> <laughs> so smiler tells him we're gonna delete you rather than you wreck everything for everyone else uh -huh. and so here's this antivirus bot yep. that comes out of nowhere and tries to shoot him so gene runs off again mm -hmm. then we cut to high five yep who has snuck into the favorites exclusive lounge yeah as he's sneaking through here gene tackles him on accident and says antivirus bots are coming and high five believes this is because he snuck into the favorites lounge and so he's on the run with gene right hey did you notice in the vip favorites lounge that beer coffee and dice were all in there i'm like i think our kid alex may be on a downward slide i'll tell you there's one d missing that shows up later it's in the unused basement and i'm like don't worry your time's coming yeah the fact that it, we'll uh, yeah. we'll talk about this in all a right. second so hi-fi then leads him to the loser lounge where the emojis that don't get used hang out which as we were hinting at includes the eggplant emoji yeah and if there is a teenage boy involved oh that's in the favorites it, for sure absolutely Bo, i gotta ask you yes in the early days of this podcast we used to do a lot of quizzes remember those days we used to do quizzes uh-huh because we had interns that like writing them for us you want a quiz i would love a quiz all right i'm gonna give you an emoji or a series of of emojis because they're going to increase in difficulty and okay. i want you to give me its sexting definition as defined by the website bestlife.com bestlife.com the first results that show up when you're searching for the keywords top dirty emoji meetings bestlife.com is it a legit site you decide all right Bo, you ready for this <laughs> all, right, all right all right all right yes 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 so we've already talked about the the eggplant is mm -hmm. for uh, a penis okay yeah that's right um the peach emoji uh vagina clearly it can be a vagina or butt uh here we go okay the all right okay sign of fingers isn't that just like the old school fucking emoji specifically it was anal sex okay so i'll give you half i'm gonna give you half credit for that thanks a pointing finger emoji would that be a penis it's fingering okay D don't overthink it taco oh well that's got to be vagina also correct the hot dog. A penis. Sweat drops. Oh, well, that's ejaculate. The judges would have also accept orgasm or semen. Okay. Now here we're going to we're gonna take things up a little bit. All right. These are going to be some combos. Donut and banana. Uh, that's about to be some sex. Specifically anal sex. Oh, all right. I don't know what's going on over at Best Life, but I want to find out. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like somebody's getting adventurous <laughs> over there and I like it. Tongue, taco, sweat drops. Uh, that is oral sex, specifically cunnilingus correct on a female uh, to the point okay. of orgasm mouth eggplant fireworks uh that's a, a good blow job <laughs> yeah oral sex for a, for a man that will blow your mind all right okay here's one waving hand peach devil that's got to be female masturbation that's a good guess in this case waving hand peach devil was you're gonna get a naughty spanking Okay. All right. Well, fair enough. See, okay. It's open to interpretation. It's not always clear. That's why you got to be careful. You don't, you, you got to make sure you're on the same weave link with the people who are getting your, your sexy emoji combos. All right. Now these are the advanced combos. All right. These are going to be worth triple points. All right. Yes. Movie ticket, flamingo dancer, 
eyeballs. I'm going to a strip club. Very, very good. I want to see you strip. Yeah, that's very good. Tongue, peach, exploding head emoji. Uh, that's got to be like mind blowing cunnilingus. It, well, in this case, uh, I'm gonna lick your butt and blow your mind. All right, if rim job or cunnilingus of. Uh, All right, snake and tulip. Ooh, snake and tulip. I mean, vaginal sex? I want to slither inside your innocent bottom. Who knew? A baguette (laughs) and a honeypot. I mean, all of mine are going to be the same if it is a tube-shaped object. (laughs) Go for it. Yeah, then I'm saying, again, this would be... Because honeypot, that's what uh, the spies were called. Beautiful spies were called. So I would think that would also be vaginal sex. Yeah, I want to put my penis in your sweet vagina. Uh Uh-huh. For extra credit, the heart emoji followed by a bone emoji is that just like i like your dick (laughs) yes it's and more more directly i love your penis not the first time you've ever heard me say that to you judges would have also accepted i'd love to bone yes okay um i feel like i acquitted myself well there i think you did very well considering you were a man who by your own admission does not use emojis very often you were able to navigate those waters successfully Thank you. I haven't used those emojis, but I've said almost all of those things, mostly to my <laughs> local clergy. To a police officer with, as I'm handing them my driver's license. Hey, you're not a cop, are you? You got to tell me, sir, I pulled you over with flashy lights. Are you saying you're a cop then? <laughs> Gene tells high five. Hey, they're not after you. They're after me. I'm a malfunction. You know, did you see Wreck-It Ralph? Anyway, come on, we got to go. So high five says, you're a malfunction. We've just got to find a hacker and get you reprogrammed. This will require us to leave the texting app, but I've done it. Plus, I heard a mysterious princess left and she lives on the cloud. We need to go find a hacker named Jailbreak. That is our mission. That is kind of the thrust of our first half of the movie where they decide, hey, we've got to get some disguises to get out of here. So they just grab a Christmas tree emoji and a cactus emoji that they use to disguise themselves so they can make their way out of textopolis and outside of the text are they corpses they're not alive they're just like laying on this couch is this like a a a A weekend at bernie scenario where uh only if every time that you play the bongos if the christmas tree starts dancing around (laughs) a little bit Weekend at Bernie's 2 had honest-to-goodness magic in it. Mm-hmm. It did. Well, it was voodoo, but yeah. <laughs> That's still magic. Black magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, suggest otherwise. I know that- Well, I mean, you know, it wasn't like David Copperfield. Like hiding an elephant from a crowd or something. Right, right. right. No, this was, <laughs> this was more like The Craft than Now You See Me. Now You See Me, a movie destined to be on this show at some point. Oh, my God. Especially Now You See Me 2. Now You See Me 2 is- maybe one of the most mind-boggling sequels ever made anyway so we're now in the wallpaper of the phone in between the apps yes the space between worlds high five is like there's a unique world inside each one don't worry about it we're not going to investigate any of that look let's just stick our face into wechat where there's a bunch of puppies or something stamping out emojis like it's a sweatshop I don't even know what the hell WeChat is. I don't know either. Like, all of this stuff is sort of this backdoor advertising for a bunch of different apps. Then they poke their head into Facebook, and this is where Gene says, Hey, I didn't know that Alex had all these friends. And High Five says something that sounds like it's going to be a thing that the movie is about, and then it's not. Which is... Well, they're not friends. They just talk about themselves. And also, you don't need friends. You need fans. And that's what these people are. Likes are all that matters here. And you're like, oh, okay. So this movie is going to be about High Five potentially learning that it's friends that matter, not fans. Mm -hmm. But to the best of my memory, this is never brought up again. No. Gene does say, I'll take one true friend over all of that support. Huh. Lesson learned. Well, forget about that from now on. We cut to Gene's mom and dad, and the dad says, I blame you for Gene's disappearance. You just wanted a vacation. We had this kid, so you wouldn't have to work so much. Our boy's on the run. We'll go find him ourselves. So off they go to look for him, and hopefully a good divorce lawyer. High Five and Gene reach the piracy app, 
which is skinned to look like a dictionary app. There's a comment here where Gene asks Kai-5, why would a teenage boy put a skin on an app? What does he have to hide? And then High 5 gives it a little side to side with the eyes, implying that his phone is riddled with pornography. <laughs> yeah. That seems to be missing from this movie, doesn't it? Like how much porno this freshman in high school is watching on his phone. Right. Like as soon as he sees the internet app, whatever that may be, Google or whatever, uh-huh. as soon as they dip into that, the history. It's just a hundred open tabs of <laughs> right the most of- like like disassociated keyword searches as this young man tries to figure out his own sexuality. Sure, just anime fuck, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like balloon rough stuff. Like what? <laughs> 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 just a fully clothed woman just popping balloons talking asmr green new deal blowjob you're like what not even sure why we got political so high five is like be careful in here this place can get rough and they go into the sounds of we're not gonna take it because nothing says this is a rough place like a 40 year old party anthem yeah it's like it's the star wars bar yes it's a bunch of weirdos like what viruses and trolls and internet trolls jeffrey ross shows up for a paycheck yeah not a very big one clearly it's a living not much of one the bartender is a trojan horse which doesn't really go anywhere high five walks up and says hello uh, we're looking for jailbreak and they're like uh jailbreak's over there and they turn around and they're like you mean jailbreak is a girl all right, all right, so we meet Jailbreak, who has blue hair and this dark knit cap with a little skull logo on the front of it. She looks like mm-hmm. every cliched skater girl. She looks a lot like the female character from Wreck-It Ralph, speaking of. You've seen all of this in pieces and parts in other movies. High Five says to her, hello, I'm High Five. I know what you're thinking. I'm the nude hamburger helper fellow, but I'm not. Um... <laughs> We need your help turning my friend Gene here into a true meh using your hacker abilities. And Jailbreak says, beat it, losers. And then uh, at this point, the AV bots show up to kill Gene. And Gene flips his shit and starts making multiple faces. And Jailbreak says, hey, I can use you. Come on, guys, follow me. So the AV bots start killing everybody in the Star Wars bar. Jailbreak, Gene, and High Five, they scamper over to this secret door that empties into a tunnel that will save them. In they go, just like in Star Wars. Only instead of into a a science fiction action adventure movie, they end up in Candy Crush. Didn't you feel gross? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's the most egregious example of them co-opting a phone thing because i think maybe the spotify one is dumber but (laughs) this does feel in defense of the filmmakers if you're making a movie about a phone and apps i mean candy crush is probably as big as it gets right and they'd already made an angry birds movie so couldn't do that right so what's the other app that is recognizable as a game on a phone other than angry birds gene falls into a level of the game and here jailbreak and high five have to play candy crush but they need to be careful not to destroy gene but then they realize hey the only way to get him out is to destroy him so they do that and then he's saved the one thing i do like about this moment is there is that cutaway where jailbreak has a daydream about matching him and then he just explodes into goo Mm -hmm. she's got problems i appreciate that i like a little darkness but think about in your own life if you were just sitting there talking to someone and your mind drifted away to a place where the person you're talking to their head exploded like scanners Uh uh-huh Oh, was that it? Oh, um, yeah, weird. So that happens. There's also a parallel scene where Alex is trying to make a little time with Addison outside of school. And when they're playing Candy Crush, you can hear his phone going, delicious, divine. And Alex gets all embarrassed because they're hearing these words and he's probably got a boner. And um, he, (laughs) he, he calls up wireless, wireless to make an appointment to get his phone fixed. This puts an appointment on his calendar and... And we cut up to the boardroom where everybody just starts losing their shit because they realize that the phone is going to go into the shop. They are going to be erased tomorrow. Yeah, if they find a malfunction. So the plan is we got to get Gene back and murder him in the town square to make sure we're clean uh, when we get to the phone store and to make an example to the other emojis. <laughs> we'll let them know what happens if they step out of line. <laughs> and so 
Jailbreak tells Jean that she is going to become his knight in shining armor and says, all we've got to do is go to Just Dance from Candy Crush and then on to Dropbox and then we can go to the cloud so we can reprogram you. All we've got to do is use facial recognition to get through the Dropbox firewall that she's banned from from because she's already tried to get through one time right but because he can make different faces they can try a bunch of different times yeah gene explains that back to her and jailbreak says yeah that was my idea thanks for mess-planning it to me you dick (laughs) and so gene's parents make their way into youtube yeah they go looking for him this goes nowhere other than to just say like hey youtube is an app and then gene's parents decide that they're going to split up to look for him because they're on the outs with one another and we see that there are some antivirus spots sent by smiler to follow them uh so that they can you know essentially use gene's parents to find him yes and so gene and then jailbreak make their way through this tunnel while high five who has been eating all the candy crush candy is losing his shit on this sugar high Mm -hmm. jailbreak says i just want to get out of the phone and into the cloud because there's so much to see and do i want to be where the ones and zeros are i want to be up there (laughs) coding hacking typing away on those what do you call them oh yeah keys up where they code up where they run more code up where they hack all day in the microsoft sun system i wanna be like all of this movie is just stuff from other movies i I really love musical breaks in this show when they happen (laughs) but gene by the way is telling jailbreak like hey i don't remember any hacker emojis and jailbreak's like i don't want to talk about it hey what's that over there and high five is like hey mate i think this hacker emoji is into you And so they end up going to the Just Dance app. They have to keep quiet and not turn the app on so music doesn't play and alert, you know, the rest of the phone question mark to their... Yeah, it doesn't wake up giant-sized Christina Aguilera. But then High Five sees a big red button and pushes it because that's what he does. That's kind of his thing, which wakes up giant-sized Christina Aguilera with her purple hair and long ponytail high five says that's fine with me because i can dance like michael and it's always good when your kids movie references a credibly accused kid fucker Mm -hmm. i think that is always important yeah it turns out jailbreak uh cannot dance Uh uh-oh and uh there's this dance off and christina aguilera leading this says you get three chances and if you fail you're gonna have a digital death and i was like wait Mm -hmm. can emojis die apparently so because they're deleting gene if he gets caught by these av bots so there's the stakes are murder and death apparently long story short gene encourages jailbreak to dance and she eventually gets into the groove as whams wake me up before you go go plays to no one's surprise, high five, he's just having a grand old time off on his own. Gene looks over at Jailbreak and he says, hey, express yourself. That was the name of this movie originally, but they got rid of it because it kind of sucks. During this touching scene, Bo, Gene comes up with a brand new dance move where he kind of plays peekaboo and each time has a new face. They ask him what this dance is called and it's called the emoji pop. That's fun, Ugh. isn't it, Bo? I wonder, Chad, do you think... Anyone in the making of this movie realistically thought this was a thing that would catch on? Like the bat dance or something? Something, right? Like, why have this big fancy dance that you're setting up in this movie if somewhere in the back of your head you're not thinking, like, people are going to be dancing like this. People are going to do this in a club. This is going to be the next Gangnam style. Yeah, right. Of course, the Christina Aguilera avatar loves it. And as Jailbreak dances, her hat comes off, and we see that she is wearing a princess tiara. Mm -hmm. And has combed brown hair, not the shaggy blue hair. When her hat pops off, the blue hair is attached to the rim of this knit black cap. It looks like a Wayne's World Halloween costume prop. (laughs) <laughs> yes it does <laughs> i like the idea that she has stolen this from like a, from spencer's some spirit store that popped up over in some no longer used app space it's over in groupon they just hung up a sign for 30 days so the av bots bust in and gene says don't worry because those robots can't dance 
And then one of the robots <laughs> goes, downloading funk protocol. Mm. And so it turns out they can dance. Disco Inferno plays. Uh-huh. And there's one cutaway where we see that Alex is in class when Disco Inferno starts to play. And so he hurriedly deletes the app. And that's where everything goes to shit inside the phone. Yeah. Because everything is starting to disintegrate as our heroes are trying to escape. Gene and Jailbreak get out of the app. Then Gene reaches back to grab High Five, but an AV bot grabs High Five, pulling him down into this abyss of deletion. Right. Then another app moves into place as Alex manipulates the icons on his phone. And then Jailbreak says, well, High Five's dead. He's he's gone in the trash. And so we've got to get to Dropbox. And this is where we get one of the lessons, question mark, of the movie, where Gene says, we've got to go get him. And Jailbreak's like, yeah, but we're we're right next to Dropbox. We can just step inside and we're, we're out of here. By the way, like I, I've always gotten by looking out for number one. And Gene says in a line that makes me wince every time it's spoken in the movie, what good is being number one if there aren't any other numbers? <laughs> and Jailbreak has this epiphany, Chad, mm-hmm. where she goes, wow. Okay. Good point. This blew her fucking emoji mind when he says this. It is something that she never considered this way before. Mm -hmm. Because she's a sociopath and a narcissist. And Jailbreak is like, well, we can ride the music stream from Spotify all the way to the trash icon. Did you notice whenever Alex has his phone and he gets flummoxed, he like pulls it out, he bobbles it, and it squirts out of his hand like a bar of soap until he finally catches it, and then he pulls it in close and kind of look, and he looks around. It feels very much like something Woody the cowboy would do in Toy Story. Yeah, I mean, like his his movements are, are comically jerky. Like even as I watch, it's like I feel like I've seen this before. Reach for the sky. Back in Textopolis, Smiler is stressing and says, we only have four hours until deletion. And then she decides that she's going to use this illegal upgrade on one of the bots as like lightning flashes outside like it's Frankenstein's castle. Mm -hmm. Then we see High Five wake up in the trash app with the Christina Aguilera and a spam letter and an internet troll. This Christina Aguilera avatar is weeping and like her mascara is (laughs) pouring down her face and she's just almost automatically just doing her dance moves and crying, which they never come back to her. Like, no, she dies in this. Right. And then when High Five got pulled into the trash, there was a robot that was yanking him down. We don't see that robot there. Seems like that's a big miss. The internet troll died. You know, there's so much pornography in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would think that that would be 99% of it. But as soon as you go to the trash, it should just sound like, uh, uh, uh-huh, oh. Because this movie doesn't have an original thought associated with it, the abyss from the trash is essentially the place where Bing Bong dies in the movie Inside Out. A movie that came out, I think, two years before this. Oh, yeah, that's true. I didn't put that together, but yeah. I like the fact that Jeffrey Ross, as the internet troll, tells High Five, this is the last face you're ever gonna see gross meanwhile gene and jailbreak ride a stream of songs in a canoe and... where did this boat come from la 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 don't be shy we're going to ride the music you can kiss the emoji trademark copyright <laughs> it's totally that gene does ask her during this scene hey let me ask you a question when a princess whistles do birds fly down from the sky like in sleeping beauty and snow white and as parodied by fiona and shrek when she sang real loud and that bird exploded can you do that and jailbreak gets real pissed off and she says that's a complete myth take that back you piece of trash i'm sorry i'm sorry I'm sorry, because she's bipolar. She says, look, let me mm. let me just change the subject. Did you know that on the first set of emojis, a woman could only be a princess or a bride? And I was like, wait a minute. I thought the first emoji was Smiler. That's what the movie told us. She's a woman. Somebody didn't pay attention to the details of this movie. Or maybe Jailbreak didn't pay attention in emoji history class. Or maybe she just cherry picks her facts to align with a particular narrative. Confirmation bias much, Jailbreak? Jailbreak says to him, when we get to the cloud, you can be whatever you want to be. Hey, look, here's a whale song coming up that we're not going to hear. But look up in the sky. There's a digital pixelated whale flying overhead. 
like in Free Willy and Free Willy 2 The Adventure Home and Free Willy 3 The Rescue and in the little known direct-to-video release Free Willy Escape from Pirate Cove. You won't see anything like this sitting in a cube, genie boy. And Gene says, you know, it's funny. You want out of the cube, but I want in. And Jailbreak says to him, Gene, if it means you can't be yourself, what's the point? Also, what's the point of this movie? Is it be who you are? Is it accept who you are? Don't let others define you? No man is an island? Words hurt more than a fist? Dancing solves everything? You know what? I just think it's cool that you're just the way you are. And Gene's like, she thinks I'm cool. And he flies around. Wait, sorry. That's yeah. yeah. Before they can fall in love too much, though, they reach the end of the stream and wash up on the shores of the app or whatever. And <laughs> in the trash app, High Five is singing and moaning. What, what is he singing He's about? Doing, it's a nobody knows. Yeah. The old spiritual. Y yeah. An African-American spiritual that came out of slavery. Again, you know, it's a kid's movie, Chad. This is what belongs here. Then this light appears above High Five and all these other individuals thrown into the trash. And Gene comes down a rope to rescue High Five. One detail we got to mention here is that High Five does find an old email to Addie where he expresses his love and feelings for her and it includes uh, a high five emoji in the email that will come up later that's right the skylight opens and then they what do they come down on it's just like a little pulley with rope yeah and as soon as they get high five up he's like listen my brothers and sisters here's the rope so you can free yourself and as he turns around he kicks that pulley thing down the hole too sealing the horrifying fates of our other apps trapped in there yeah, there's no way they can get out with a rope this thing's like 500 feet above their head yeah best case scenario they should just pile up all of the trash and get to the top and climb out through the hole but we never see these characters again we assume that they die here yes probably worth mentioning also that alex's pal says that the girl that he's interested in Addie, is going to be with her friends at the promenade which as fate would have it is where alex is going to get his phone reset every time we see alex he's always got this wingman poking him in the rib like hey man there's Addie. go get you some and he's like oh, i don't know what to say i should send her an emoji <laughs> how about you send her one of those porn videos you're always watching send her a dick pic. say this could be us she's got snapchat send her a picture of your cop it'll only be there for a few seconds and then she'll she'll know what you got going on you think she'll like that yeah girls love dick pics do you have eggplant your favorite send her that and that little squirty sweaty thing that lets her know that you jerk off to her girls like that stuff Jane's mom looks for him in instagram where we see pictures of alex and his family in paris Ooh la la and looks real sad because she see pictures she's sees about to get divorced she can't start her at this stage in her life. She's got a teenage son. She's got a lot of baggage. Let's face it. She's going to go with his dad. <laughs> She's going to move back in with her Spencer aunt. Her sister, the exasperated emoji. <laughs> So Gene's mom walks into a photograph mm -hmm. of Alex, his mom and dad in Paris. And I don't understand this at all. She goes into the picture and it's like the matrix. It's that effect where everything is stuck three dimensionally in one location, but then there's a character that can walk through it. So it pivots around. It's unnecessary. She goes over to this fountain. She's like, eh, I'm a shitty ma'am. I wish I knew where my son was. I never should have married that other piece of shit and mel meh and then mel is sitting on the other side of the fountain he's like i can hear you but i need to tell you something the reason our son gene is such a malfunction is because of me i can show other emotions too and he comes around and they make up right and so as our heroes travel through the phone high five once again asks jailbreak is it true that what they say about you whistling and calling down birds and she's like, shut up! I will kill the next motherfucker that asks me about whistling. Yeah. And then at this point, the AV robot, the supercharged one, shows up. And apparently the filmmakers of the Emoji movie saw Spider-Man 2. Because this thing now has Doc Ock extendo pincher claws. Mm -hmm. And once it gets supersized, it reminded me of like a pint-sized version of Sauron, the big eye creature from the Lord of the Rings. Like it's got a big red eye on top, a teardrop-shaped black body. And then it starts chasing them. 
and they're like, we got to split up. Yeah. And so they do. Because the filmmakers saw the original Shrek bow, and that's how they escaped that dragon that was chasing them. They split up and ran around until the dragon's chain created knots on itself so it couldn't get after them. But it only lasts for a second. Like, they lose the thing for a hot second, and then it just comes back after them. But they do escape into Dropbox in the meantime. Well, you know, every teenager bow has Dropbox. That's the coolest app there is. <laughs> right. It's not just for old people yeah. that have to, you know, share files between sure. work and uh-huh. podcast co-hosts and whatnot. Dropbox, but- TurboTax, QuickBooks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all the cool kids have, man. Right. You Need a Budget is in there. I don't understand why this kid has Dropbox other than to help progress this movie's excuse for a plot along. But they hop into Dropbox and the AV bot can't follow them because it has illegal malware, except in two or three minutes, it totally follows them. So I don't know what happened there. They climb into what looks like a theme park ride, like it's three seats across with a little lap belt. And because it's a drop box, they get dropped and they zoom down. It's all, it's wonderfully fun for people under the age of four to watch this. And they land in front of a firewall, which is literally a wall of fire. And it speaks Mm -hmm. with this robotic female voice, similar to GLaDOS in Portal or our own beloved Pick 6 bot from this podcast. Mm -hmm uh she's a sweetie (laughs) gene steps up on this platform and jailbreak is gonna start spouting off passwords so gene pulls up one of his faces he says the wrong password and he gets blasted with a charring stream of fire from below and does this hurt gene it seems to at least a little bit but he goes through it a hundred plus times and he even asks, do i have to do this every time shut up yes (laughs) Yeah, you do. They're just trying password after password, and it's jailbreak going through all of you know Alex's personal files to try to find the word that serves as his password. Gene, at one point, says, geez, I don't know. I'd probably use the name of a girl I liked. And jailbreak's like, he's never mentioned any girl. I think he might be gay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then High Five is like, there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever he wants to do, whatever he wants to be is fine. And she's like, yeah, I know, but he hasn't told his parents yet. I keep looking in through the notes on his phone to see if he's like working on a speech or something that he's going to give them and maybe to his friends. But High Five is like, no, no, no. I found this email down in the trash. He's definitely straight. In fact... He says horrible things to this young woman. It turns out that here is this email, which actually reads, You and I were like diamonds in the sky. You're a shooting star I see. A vision of ecstasy. Shine bright like a diamond. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to say, You just seem so cool, Al. Signed, Alex. And then a high five sign. So his love letter to her is just a copy paste of Rihanna song lyrics. Yes. Along with, You seem so cool. Well, that's, that's how he makes it his own. I guess. Yeah, it's a real Cyrano de Bergerac we got on our hands yeah. here, Chad. Gene steps up on the platform. He uses the password Addy, and the firewall opens up, and they get led into the magical land of Oz. I mean, the cloud. And they tromp, tromp, tromp in, and it's sort of these digital clouds everywhere and these tall, futuristic-looking buildings with tubes zip-zopping around. And Jailbreak says, so um, I guess I'm going to start hacking. I'm going to turn you into a real meh. Uh, high five. I'll get you back in the VIP section, and we're going to be good to go. And high five is excited. Everybody gets what they want. But then Gene goes over to Jailbreak, and he's like, hey, Hey, jailbreak look you're the coolest emoji ever and my feelings are huge now i was like what and he was like i, I want to <laughs> stay who i am with all of these multiple personalities and they hold hands and jailbreak is like whoa 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 man look i got a plan and it doesn't include me being a princess waiting for some prince like you said i was beautiful that's nice and all but look i've been dreaming of getting here this is over and then gene's like oh Really? Well, I guess I'm really a meh because you broke my heart and said those mean things. And then that AV bot shows up because everything they said earlier doesn't matter. How did it know the password, Bo? I I got nothing for you. It comes in and just whips its Doc Ock claw, grabs Gene by the face like he's Spider-Man, and then yanks him back to Textopolis for that public slaughter. And then we cut to the phone store, cellular, cellular, or whatever, wireless, wireless, uh, run by Mario Mario. Right. And at the store, Alex shows up and is like, hey, I'm early for my appointment. And they're like, oh, that's okay. We can get you in early. And this is one of 
of the more exciting customer service scenes that you're going to find in this movie. <laughs> I think it's rivaled with the, the moment where he goes to the coffee shop and is like, hey, do you have hazelnut creamer? And they're like, yeah, we do. He says thank you and leaves them an, an extra generous tip of 75 yeah. cents. I mean, for a freshman in high school, that seems like you're really doing them a favor. Yeah, I mean, he upped it to 20%, and that's not nothing for a high schooler. So Jailbreak has achieved her plan. She's on the cloud. Hooray for Jailbreak. Yay. And then High Five walks over, and he's like, Jailbreak, that AV butt just took Gene back to the start of the movie. It happened right over there. It was really loud and violent. I'm so, I'm honestly surprised you didn't hear all the commotion. Yeah, sorry. I was too worried about getting what I want. <laughs> <laughs> what was your name again hamburger and this is concerning a uh, high five says gene looked more mad than i've ever seen him look mad before what did you say to him and jailbreak says ah it's not what i said to him it's kind of more of the way i said it i mean what i didn't say all right look uh, we gotta go save gene christ i can't believe i gotta do this and then in what is it, a truly perplexing moment in this movie jailbreak whips off her knit cap with the attached blue wig and she's got a little crown on her comb brown hair and this whole film she has just been espousing the offensive nature of female stereotypes but then here she just uses her natural princess abilities to whistle in an effort to call birds to help them is the message of this movie you don't have to conform to preconceived definitions of who you are but when you're in a pinch toss your ideals out the window do what you got to do to get what you need what a better movie this would be if she said no i can't do that thing that i've been telling you i can't do and instead i'm gonna use this other talent i have that i had to hide all along right like explosive farts like if she picked him up and just like blasted through the air <laughs> <laughs> oh boy that'd be good yeah the reason that no one ever took me seriously as a princess is because i could propel myself into the air like a jetpack only i use my ass but sure enough she whistles a couple of times nobody comes and then she gives it another whistle and in flies the twitter bird boy that's aging well yeah at one point in the future this will serve as sort of a reference to the fact that there was in fact a something called twitter sure <laughs> that this movie will not age well no 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 i mean already with the candy crush it's like I, I think we've all moved on from that you know it's one of the beauties of the digital age is that the pace of things is so quick that things are always replaced by better versions or different versions of those things like facebook is losing subscribers because tiktok is more popular and eventually tiktok will not be popular and there'll be something else and twitter is dying but oh the guy who invented twitter has an, has done an app called blue sky and that seems to be the thing that's gonna supplant twitter it's just this constant churning yeah. of apps the best this movie can do is to be a snapshot of a place in time but yeah when you see this twitter bird show up all i can think is like oh yeah that is the app that now users that have authenticated blue check marks beside their name are actively telling people just keep in mind i am not paying for this because i think this app is garbage <laughs> so anyway we come back to smiler who says now we can delete gene the technician will discover that there's nothing wrong with the phone and we'll all be safe and there's a countdown clock on the wall with three minutes but alex showed up early for the appointment uh-huh so that doesn't square and like and then you don't really even need this countdown clock on the wall that doesn't matter at all no so they show up and gene's there and he's all sad and all of the emojis are there in their cubes because they're wanting to see a public execution yeah this is like late 18th century france yes the fact that they don't have torches in the background is is a real miss do you think that because you know chad when you die all your muscles relax and you end up peeing and pooping yourself right do you think that when this happens to gene when he's deleted do you think a little poop emoji appears maybe that's how they reproduce <laughs> that would be pretty good <laughs> but gene's parents show up to stop smiler and, and the robot has fired up its lasers to kill gene and his dad is like this is all my fault because I can do exactly what Gene's doing. So you'll have to delete us both. And sure enough, this AV bot just grabs. <laughs> the dad is like, fine, I will destroy you both. He's like, oh, I didn't think this through. Then Sir Patrick Stewart chimes in as Pooh and says, 
you're making too big a stink about all this. Uh, does everyone get it because I'm poop? Yeah. That uh, it, it makes a stink like poop does. <coughs> I, I was in Shakespeare. <coughs> I'm going to call my agent after this. <coughs> so his dad <laughs> tells Gene, I was all wrong, son. I'm happy to die with you. Yeah. And at this moment of apocalypse, High Five and Jailbreak show up. They come crashing through the ceiling, which uh-huh. is exactly how Shrek and Donkey show up at the end of that first Shrek movie to stop the wedding. Oh, I didn't even remember that. I guess that's true. I know it's true. I've seen Shrek a bunch. In a minute, we're going to get a scene where all of our characters are being killed which is a tip of the hat to Toy Story 3. I wish that movie had stopped right there in Toy Story 3 when they all link arms and swirling the drain around this open fire pit. And you just fade to black. Then you get the word Finn. It's been a pleasure serving with all of you. It sure has, Woody. Do, 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 do. Well, it sure was a surprise that they all died tonight nobody saw that coming but that's friendship <laughs> died with the closest friend in a file pit <laughs> it's better than dying alone but not by much <laughs> not by much you got friendship but you still real dead <laughs> 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 yeah, so they're they're trying to turn off this stupid AV bot. And Jailbreak gets thrown free. And sure enough, High Five comes to the rescue because he hits all the buttons because he's a bunch of fingers. And it's either hitting buttons or going in butts. It's one of the two. So Jean's asked Jailbreak, like, hey, what happened to being number one? She says, well, that's the thing. What about all the other numbers? And you're like, oh, I just hate all of this. This is not a lesson. This is just a thing that makes me mad to hear it. So this buzzer sounds and the phone's about to be deleted. This is the Star Trek thing where we hear Patrick Stewart's yell, red alert, red alert. And it's one of the most demeaning things I've ever seen in a movie. Addie shows up (laughs) at the phone store. While that's happening, Jailbreak says, we've got time to send just one text to try to get through to Alex and save everybody so we don't have to listen to a Randy Newman song. (laughs) Have to or get to, you be the judge. And then the heart face emoji and shy emoji are like, you should send us because that's how he feels. And High Five says, no, no, it should be Gene because he conveys all of those those emotions. And Smiler says, an emoji can only be one thing. Yeah, but she got crushed and killed. And she says that from off camera. Yeah. And that's where Jailbreak shows off her tiara and everybody's like, a princess. And she's like, you can be more than one thing. And then as the last of these apps are dissolving, Gene has a flashback to all of the wild adventures that he and Jailbreak and High Five went on. And so Jailbreak sends this final emoji message. It's a real head scratcher because they're trying to ratchet up the tension. And then Gene just has a little pleasant flashback looking through the postcards of his mind of things that happened throughout this horrible movie. Right before you die, you remember all the stuff that you did. All the friends that you made, all the people you knew. Then you shit yourself and threw your pants of poo. Friendship and oblivion because that's what waits on the other side you know that's how they could have made this movie better it's like it feels like they were trying to make something good they should have just leaned into the shittiness of it and just did (laughs) what uh like you know how book of mormon parodies the like all of the tropes of broadway musicals do that for Mm. animated movies like realize like we know this is going to be shitty let's just make fun of computer animated films Oh, yeah. If somebody had actually cared to make something that wasn't just a callous no, money grab. Just like sure. make it so grotesquely cynical. And then you could truly have them all die at the end, you know? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be a kid's movie, but it would be shocking and funny and... Music by not Randy Newman. Everybody's time for a movie. 
I'm gonna sing a song. Here we go. Look at us with Instagram. Here's some pictures of somebody's grandma, but she ain't alive anymore. Dick pics. Who wants a dick pic? <laughs> I got a dick pic for everybody. So Alex gets this stupid emoji, which is like hard eyes and a kiss and a blush and all these things. And he sends it to Addie, who kind of sees it and giggles a little and comes over to him and says, hey, I love this emoji that you sent me. (gasps) But I love it because it expresses all these feelings at once. And I like that you're one of those guys who can express his feelings. Uh, Yeah, words. Would you... Why do you have your hands shoved in your pants like that? Would you... Want to go to the dance with you? Sure, I would love to go to the dance with you. Would you mind if I go clean myself up in the bathroom? You're so funny. It's funny because the guy just came on himself. He never talked to a girl before. His pants are all sticky and she can see everything. <laughs> he didn't expect this when he came to the phone store. It's called orgasm. Your first orgasm when you're 14 standing next to a girl. While he's humiliated, all the apps are dying. Yeah, while well, all this is going on, inside the phone, everything is getting Thanos snapped. Or if you want to go old school, it's like the nothing from the never-ending story. They are just disappearing. Gene sees his parents get deleted. High Five gets deleted. Alex walks over and unplugs his phone from a cable that stops the deletion, which that's not how anything works. All the other stuff would stop stay deleted but that's not you know uh, right, sure everybody celebrates gene like you did it you saved everybody gene and then we go to our next scene our wrap up where music is playing and gene is going to the favorites area where he's stopped by the bouncer or whatever this is all just a ruse that everyone has set up because they want to play a, a trick on their savior. And it turns out there's no longer a favorites area because now we live in a communist right. utopia where everyone is equal and they all do the emoji pop dance to celebrate the fact that they're all still alive. Right. And then we see Alex take a picture at the dance that he and Addie have gone to. He selects Gene as the emoji to attach to this. Even though when he does it, Gene is not doing the kind of kissy face shy face. He's just making whatever the fuck face he wants to, <laughs> I guess. He's earned that right as savior of the phone. Sure. And then credits. The second most embarrassing thing I think is seen in this movie during the credits where you see and Sir Patrick Stewart as, quote, poop. Yeah. That's pretty bad. But there's also a mid credit scene, Chad, because... I didn't see that. Why not? It's Smiler in that dungeon where Eggplant is, although he's probably been promoted upstairs <laughs> since the dance. And she's in braces, like her jaws wired shut. Aw. Playing Go Fish with that little sushi roll and a bunch of others in, in the basement. And that's it. That was a rough one. That is a terrible terrible movie yeah is it the worst we've seen this season maybe we've said that a lot like super mario brothers is so fucking weird (laughs) like it shouldn't be celebrated but it at least is this weird blend of something that directors were going for and this other stuff that happened to the movie it you can kind of see the kernels of something interesting there this is the most cynical movie that we've done this season that only exists to make money i would agree with We've had a few seasons like this before where the entire collective is just rotten. Yeah. And this season is pretty, pretty bad because they're all cash grabs. No one was really trying to do anything other than make money. Mario Brothers might be the best movie we, we see this season. It's quite possible, which is shocking. That movie was awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, certainly wasn't this movie. And I can't speak to what our season finale is going to be because I have not seen this movie in decades. Which, Bo, would you care to introduce what our season finale of this season's theme pop culture club is going to be? By the power of Grayskull, Chad, (laughs) we are going to watch that Dolph Lundgren, Frank Langella, Masters of the Universe movie. And God only knows. It can't be worse than this. Frank Langella is in it. And my understanding is that this was a performance that he was truly proud of. And having him coming into every scene, chewing the furniture, the walls, and the legs of other characters is going to elevate it to a certain place. Absolutely. I'm not saying it's going to be good. I'm saying it's going to be better than this. So we're going to go out on not a high note. That's overstating (laughs) it. We're going out on not the worst note. I also.
also want to say, just because it's timely of when we were recording this, we really considered doing Jerry Springer's Ringmaster, but yeah, that movie was a comedy and it didn't fit. It, it, it wasn't going to do what we wanted it to do, but I just wanted to say R.I.P. Jerry Springer. He provided me personally with hours upon hours of violent white trash entertainment through my uh, college and early 20s. So Yeah, rest in peace Jerry Springer and Tweaky Dave, wherever <laughs> you both may be. Fo, any final thoughts that you have on the Emoji Movie? They should have just called this movie Sir Patrick Stewart because it's poop. <laughs> We'll see you in two weeks' time, everybody.